This is Refresh, and I went to Ixalan pre-release. This is the pre-release pack that I got. Inside, I got this cool spin-down counter in red. This card divider with a weapon on it. One promo foil glacial fortress. And a little treasure map, which says this as well as just some information on how to build the sealed deck. There's not a lot of information, but some information. This is my second pre-release. I played one yesterday, and that will go up on the blog, but I thought I would tell you a little bit about how it went. So this is everything I opened, and as you can see, there was a lot in a lot of colors, but blue. Overall, I thought my pool was all right. It wasn't spectacular, especially on top in terms of rares, I think I would say that I got a decent rare and hostage taker here. Aside from that, I think the only other rare that I really liked was Settle the Wreckage right here. An Emperor's Vanguard that if it hits my opponent, it explores. There was this Herald of Secret Streams, which is kind of like a merfolk boss. So there wasn't a lot going on for merfolk, but what there was was a lot of removal in black. I had two contract killings, Vraska's Contempt, which actually was a good rare in black, and then some combat tricks in Skullduggery, and I had a lot of pirates in blue and black, and when you put those together, it seemed like it could be a pretty good deck. Red was kind of, I mean, I had a ton of cards in red, but a lot of those cards were dupes of not that great of cards, like three Rummage Goblins. Now, I, trust me, I like a Rummage Goblin, maybe two in the deck if I really was desperate. The first one's good just to be able to rummage through your cards when you get to the late game, but three of them... Not that great. The Headstrong Boots were decent, the Brazen Buccaneers were decent, but for the most part, Red just didn't have a lot that really worked together well with anything. And Green had some nice big beats, and White had some decent creatures all along the curve, as well as the other part of removal, because I didn't really have removal in blue, red, or green. So those were kind of what I was looking at. I also had Deadeye Plunderers and Hostage Taker in black and blue, so I was really drawn towards that combination as well as either the green and red combination or the white and green combination. So this was the first deck that I built. It's sort of a very aggro pirate build, and it has a lot of removal from black, and then it also has some level of card value from three card draw spells, and one Skullduggery for a combat trick, a cancel for another way of possibly blowing out my opponent, and Prying Blade and Cobbled Wing is two pieces of equipment that these pirates can use to get in. The Prying Blade and Cobbled Wings actually work together pretty well because if the Prying Blade creates a treasure every time that it hits, as, and the Cobbled Wings gives creatures evasion. But so many of my creatures already have flying that I felt like just the Prying Blade alone will help me get the mana I need eventually to be able to cast whatever I have to cast. For example, if the Hostage Taker will take one of my opponent's big creatures, then if I have a cache of treasures, then I can cast it immediately and not have to worry about my hostage taker being blown out or something. And it also works well with the Dead Eye Plunderers. So this is kind of a low curve. Everything's in the two and three drop range. And then at the top, I have ways of destroying my opponent's creatures. So I have basically four pieces of removal near the top, and these two actually create more treasures as well. And so that's kind of the deck that I built. Eventually, I did realize in my second match, first game, that this deck was prone to flooding, and if it floods, it's going to lose. And so I took out a swamp and put in a shipwreck looter to get to 40. I felt because the curve was so low, and I had so many ways of generating treasure that it would be okay to drop down just a little bit in terms of lands with 16 instead of 17. And it worked out quite well for me in the end. This Selesnya deck was the other deck that I put together, and it's sort of a ramp into Dino's big beat sort of deck. It has, for its non-creature spells, all removal or combat tricks. We have Rallying Roar for mass damage and possibly a big blowout. Crash the Ramparts for another potential blowout. And then three pieces of removal, including a Wrath, a one-sided Wrath. And then also that Atzo can, Archer can act as removal as well. And so the idea is that the Kanjali's Caller will hopefully come down and then push me towards casting these big dinos. In the meantime, I'm going to just try to hold the ground with 
the two drops, three drops, and four drops until I can get there and maybe get some value. But once I start playing the big dinos or maybe the little dino, the pterodon knights get quite good. And once I play the big beats, I just have big creatures and there's nothing you can do. And so that's kind of the idea of the deck. I only really played it once and I was a little less than impressed because Settle the Wreckage was not exactly the game winner that I was hoping it to be. I mean, it is rare so that nobody's going to play around it, but when I create a state where my opponent could possibly blow me out, my opponent wouldn't usually because, you know, they were afraid that maybe I had Rallying Roar to untap my guys or whatever. So that didn't turn out to be great for me, and I only played this once and decided that my blue-black deck felt a lot better in my hands, and so that's what I stayed with. So how did these decks play out? So for the very first game, I went up against a Jund deck. The very first game of that match, I was super aggressive. I basically played one drop, two drop, three drop, and just got in there with flyers. Even though my opponent eventually was able to play a few creatures, at that point I had done so much damage that it was hard for him to get back. And so my big group of flyers just finished him off for the win taking only a couple of light hits myself, and that was that. The second game, we started off a little bit more evenly, but eventually my opponent just flooded out with lands, and I didn't need very many lands, and so I was doing just fine. And so I won the second game in quite the hurry, thanks to an abundance of attackers. Game two was against Naya Dinosaurs, and the first game I got rocked pretty soundly. There was a lot of back and forth at first, but eventually I ran out of gas and started flooding, drawing lands, while my opponent kept playing creatures, and his creatures were bigger than mine. He had reach, he had flyers that were bigger than my flyers, and eventually I just could not find a way through, and so I ended up running my life total pretty low, and then having to chump to survive, and I could not keep up after that. The second game of match two, I decided to switch decks completely because I thought I couldn't compete with his big creatures with my little creatures, so I thought I'd switch to my green-white deck. And so that's what I did. It did not go that well. I did manage to have some good cards open, like having Settle the Wreckage, I had the Rallying Roar combat trick, but I was always just a little bit behind my opponent, and because of that, it was really hard for me to catch up, even though he started with a mulligan to six. And I made some hasty attacks and plays, hoping that he would make an error and strike back with too many creatures, but eventually his flying creatures were able to get around everything that I had, and so I couldn't do much about about it. He also had a Shining Aerosaur, and at that point I had taken too much damage, and so I couldn't really go on the Assault, and so he would eventually wiped my board clean through eventually forcing me to chomp, and then he played a Dinosaur that was so big that it made all the other creatures big, and then he made even more Dinosaurs, and there's nothing that I could do, so I just lost at that point. And that was the end of match two. My third match was against a young man that I have played several times before. The first game was, again, really, really brutal. On my part, I had every single card that he needed every single time. I had creatures on almost every turn, and most of them were evasive. They were flying over his creatures. I was blowing up his creatures with removal, and all that fueled with treasure, which helped me get more tempo by playing more than one thing a turn. I was removing things, and I kind of just won it in a hurry. The second game was probably the tightest and most contentious of the day. We actually just traded and played out and traded and played out and played big creatures. He played a lot of powerful dinosaurs, including a white dinosaur that sort of wrathed the whole board. But in response to him playing that, I held up my hostage taker. I played my hostage taker, stole his 7-7, and then he played an ancient Brontodon. And I attacked for lethal, and he blocked because he had to, and then he played Skullduggery to trade it all again, and so we were, ended up top, top decking at the very end. Eventually, I had one more turn on him, and I had a Sky March Bloodletter with a Prying Blade on it, and in two turns I would have beat him. He had a 3-5, which he could attack me with on the crackback, so I hit him, but on the crackback when he attacked me, he also managed to draw into a Crash the Ramparts, and that killed me. And so he took the second game. I had four cards left in my deck, and there wasn't much left that I could do. So it was off to game three. In the third game, it was again a devastation on my part. I played all the creatures in all the time that I needed. I removed everything with removal spells as I needed, 
and the Flyers eventually got in for the win, generating a bunch of treasure, and that was that. In the fourth match, I went up against a gentleman playing, Naya, and we played some pretty tight games. I, I think the first game was a little bit more of a blowout on my part because I was just drawing on fire, so every raid, every attack that I made, I had raid triggers, I was card drawing, I was playing removal to blow out his creatures, and that got me through to the end in pretty quick order. Not the fastest order, there was a lot of back and forth, but uh, I was letting him hit me on the ground and just hit him even harder in the sky. And that worked out pretty well for me in the end, especially with all the treasure I was generating, the card draw I had, and that was a pretty punishing game. My opponent then sideboarded out like half of his deck, and so he spent a good amount of time doing that. So I waited, and then we started playing again, and this was the second match. This was a lot tighter. My opponent, I think, sided out most or all of his green, and so he used a much more aggressive red-white deck, and he came barreling through a lot for a lot of damage from turn after turn at the early onset of the game before I was able to stabilize with more pirates. And then I started turning the tables and hitting him, and then we both kind of stabilized. My opponent had me down to five life, and so if he had just done one more damage to me, he had a burn spell in his hand, which I wasn't aware of at the time, that would finish me off. But my board was bigger than his, and I had just a little bit more life to get through. So I went for the big swing, and then I left one creature back in case he would get some sort of haste spell. And he blew up one creature that was attacking that had the blade on, so that would take him to two life. And then on his turn, he was planning on perhaps hitting me back and then getting through for the last bits of damage. But what I did was I played Hostage Taker, stole his creature, played it, and then swung in with everybody on and left him with very little recourse and won. So that was a really tight game. It was really, really close all the way to the very end. And I came through. And with that, I went 3-1. I think in the second match, second game, I probably should have just stuck with the Pirates, but I was so shaken by that loss that it made me probably make an error in judgment and go to the Selesnya Dinosaurs. But other than that, I think I did pretty well. I ended up leaving with three additional packs. I thought that Ixalan was a pretty good set. I really enjoyed the synergies when I could find them in the very first pre-release. I had some interesting synergies with Merfolk and Pirates and Blinking and Explore, and that was kind of cool. And then this one, I had all the Pirates and all the Aggro, and this was actually quite a good sealed deck. It's kind of amazing that I didn't end up using my most populous co color in red and white and green and went with the smaller color, but the mix of tempo, card draw, removal, and just crazy good aggro cards really got me there. So I was happy with my Ixalan pre-release, my second one. I had the first one up on Init Games' website, and you can go check that out there. This is also embedded into that. And if you like this video, hit like. If you would like to see more such videos, hit subscribe. I will probably be doing a draft aftermath after the draft next week. And thanks everybody for watching. This was Refresh, and I will see you next time.